My name is Whitney Hill, founder and director of Spork, and I am the moderator for today's interview. I think that uh, because uh, it's human nature to judge the book by the cover, uh, I think that as people of color, um, sometimes we have to be more uh, intentional about letting others know that uh, that we do know or that uh, we do have a degree of intelligence or that we are qualified because uh, so sometimes I have felt that I was just judged. And if you uh, have a speech issue, then it feeds into their stereotype of you. Yeah. And, and they, um, people often equate the speech impediment with a lack of knowledge or education or with ignorance or whatever. And so, you know, um, uh, I think that's sometimes I feel the need to say, hey, you know, um, I know my stuff or, you know, I, I do have knowledge. Uh, and that may just be my own insecurity, but uh, I do feel that sometimes uh, people equate the, the speech problem with speech disorder with a lack of intelligence. Uh, Dr. Darrell was saying that uh, 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 substituting words, which is very a common thing that, that stutterers does, uh, that, uh, that stutterers do. Um, uh, Biden, the, the man running for president now, uh, he was a stutter, and and if you notice, quite often, quite often he uh, he substitutes words. He tried to get a word out, and it doesn't come out, and he use another one. Yeah. yeah, that is true, and I know this too. Like you mentioned, you're holding something so that you can, I guess it's a way of that tension. It can, it just, it disperses the tension. He always holds it, uh, an ink pen. He always has a pen or something in, in his hand. I tend to do the same thing. Like right now, I have this bean bag. <laughs> So as I'm talking, I'm like gripping the bean bag and I let it go. <laughs> so it's a, it's a way of dispersing that tension. The interesting thing that really um, about him running and with how his speech disinfluencies and his stuttering have been turned um, against him. Um, like we've said, if you have a speech impediment of any kind, people will automatically think that you're unintelligent that you don't know what you're doing. And it's very disheartening for me that a large part of our society has heard Biden with his stuttering, knowing that he has a stutter, some people do, some people don't, and then spinning that into he's unintelligent, he has dementia. And I think that that narrative is so incredibly damning and for that narrative to continuously play out for a major political figure uh, running for the top office and in 2020 <laughs> yeah, and to still see that like damning language and and that spin on intelligence I don't really care if what party you're in I just think that that's a shameful tactic because once again um some people, stuttering is considered a non-apparent, you know, disability. Uh, in my mind and in my book, any disability and difference should not be made fun of and should be respected. That person should be respected. And this is a clear example of um, a figure on a daily basis getting uh, called out for having dementia because of a disability. Um, but that is not actually dementia. Uh, how can you uh, really uh, 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 accept a person but still make fun of them? Uh, growing up as children, regardless of, of what, it, as to whether it's speech or not, I, I mean, I feel like in high school I was uh, really accepted, <laughs> but 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 they made fun of me. And, I mean, all the way through. And, and, I, and even when I started teaching, uh, I think about, I thought it was a boy that was the, uh, 
they gave the glass typing uh, manual typewriters, and that was a boy that was that had that um, that arm problem, and the, all the kids called him Wing. Wing was as popular in the kids as, as I mean, as all as all as all the other children were. But but they still made fun of him. But he was accepted. And because I even tried to get, because I, because I even talked with the, with the typing teacher about not even, uh, about him, about him not going to, uh, to, to uh, typing, but he could, could take that arm and move that typewriter as well. I mean, as others, and, and for that reason, but the kids still nicknamed him Wing, and uh, but they accepted him, and so sometimes I'm trying. To, to say, because it is a natural thing for kids to, to make fun of you, uh, uh, to tease you uh, if you're different, but they still accept you. And I, I guess they call it bullying now. I, mean, I don't know what they call it now, but to me, I was accepted, but I was different. And there were other children that were accepted, and but they were different too. Do you, do you think that... Um children who like you said who who do like the who make fun and who might are labeled like the bully do you think that those people grow up to be empathetic adults um because i guess my my question is is there is the is there is such a thing as making fun of someone and still respecting them I, I suppose so. I don't know. And now, what you're saying is that to accept everybody, uh, to accept people with without um, um, making me me a distinction, I, I probably would be very difficult for that for the average person until they reach a certain age of maturity. I tend to think that. It a true friend won't won't make fun of you, you know. I think a true <laughs> friend or, or or that 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 inner circle friend. Um, but it, it's hard to limit that because otherwise, you you know, you may only have one or two people that you could talk to uh, at school in a whole day. So you have to have other friends, and some of those are going to tease you, and and they're going to mock you, and that, that's just what they do. Uh, but um, I tend to think that they people often do that because uh, they have their own insecurities, and I think they feel the need to hi highlight uh, the flaw in you to feel better about themselves. And so, as it has been said, it says more about them than it does about you. I think, and there are those who become at us, and they continue with that same behavior, and they never outgrow it. Yeah, I would agree because as as you were talking, I was thinking like I could see the faces of the kids who used to make fun of me. Like the from second grade to eighth, I went to school with the same kids, and I even went to school with part of those kids for high school. And I still know the first and last names of the kids who used to tease me. If someone asks me to give you a description, I can tell you what they usually wore. I can tell you what the hair looked like. I can tell you their little idiosyncrasies because it was very hurtful. I think a lot, there are more people than not um, of people out there who um, probably face some sort of um, microaggressions due to either their disability or race. Um, than they do with having someone in their corner telling them that they are accepted and loved for who they are. And, you know, I think it's important that we keep reminding people that. because uh, this is actually a mouthful of a title that I chose, and it's kind of ironic because it takes me a second to get it out.